It's a common thing, right? You get excited when you buy a widget. All right, a widget is something they mention in marketing books, but really what they mean is just like something. You get the box, you buy it. It's got about 240 pieces and a 15 page manual. Then you throw out the manual because first off, who reads manuals? And you tear into assembling whatever it is that you managed to buy because it was Black Friday or Cyber Monday and you just wanted to buy stuff. Then four hours later and six beers, if you are over the age of 21, you're crying at the desk I mean, it really just looks a little bit more like a Bansky piece of art than it does an actual desk, right? Hence the reason installation booklets are provided with your items. Even though we don't wanna use them, we probably should have, you know? It, it, it's so it gets built correctly, so there's not a guessing game. The same work applies to when you install car parts, and that happens to me almost every time I try to do it, particularly with coilovers. I'm Alex, Alex.fi on Instagram, and today we're gonna to be talking about mistakes that you have or are probably making with your coilovers. All right, let's go. I said, let's go. I don't know what I'm saying. Oh. miss that show. And if you're just jumping into one of our videos, I have, okay. I'm Alex, and thank you so much for subscribing. If you're looking for aftermarket wheels, tires, or suspension, be sure to check us out over at fitmentindustries.com. We have everything you could possibly imagine, including, you know, coilovers with instruction manuals and uh, Dakota slaps every single wheel. PPS, we launched our own very own wheel company, Artist of Art Form Wheels. It's super awesome. We'd appreciate it if you could check it out. You can check it out over at FI or you can check it out at artistswheels.com. We'd love to have your support as we jump into 2021. Back to the days of suspension, here's a few common things that you might be doing with your coilovers that could be done incorrectly. Now, a lot of times coilovers are almost just purchased and then you throw them in there, you slam it on the ground, you send it to sky high and you say, F oil pans, I'm doing things my way and you enjoy the pain of your back compressing every single time and the fact that your wife doesn't actually want to drive in your car anymore because they've made it so uncomfortable and unreliable, but it's still a blast. However, sometimes you want to adjust your ride height and you're probably adjusting your ride height incorrectly. Lots of times you'll end up raising the lower locking knuckle that keeps your spring compressed as a way to lower your car slightly. However, that can be incorrect. Now, while it can be used for fine tuning as needed, the best way to go about adjusting your ride height is to take the coilovers out and thread up or thread down the lower body. Now, with that being said, you do need to do that within reason and you need to know if the coilovers that came to you were already assembled based on your year, make, and model in mind. There are some coilover companies that will actually assemble everything, including the total length of the coilover based on your vehicle. If they do that, you're gonna wanna use that threaded collar. But if they don't, and a lot of times the lower entry level coilovers will not, that's what you can use to adjust your coilovers, okay? Because the ride height is such a funky thing and because we are who we are, sometimes we don't like to take the coilover out. We ended up bloodying up our knuckles using the spring locking knuckle piece instead. I know you've done it, I've done it. I've tried to actually do it like in the worst way possible and I ended up bruising up my entire hand because I was trying to do it fast and ended up taking longer, and that's no fun. Now, everything with coilovers is in moderation too, and lots of companies will preset, again, they will preset those threaded bodies to the car that they're going on, so it's important that you know if they did before or not. If they did it before, use a locking collar. If they didn't, or they just don't respond to your email, the odds are is that they also didn't. And a lot of times those entry level coilovers, like I said before, will just be the maximum length they can be, and that's what you need to dial it in. Just make sure you're doing it for all four. And remember, if you shorten the shock body, you're also taking out suspension travel, you're taking out droop travel, and you're taking out all of that good stuff. So you wanna keep it in the middle, boys and girls, and you'll be all set. All right, if you don't know what all of that other stuff is that we just talked about, you just have to imagine that a suspension piece needs to do this. If you make the total thing smaller, it's not able to do that as much. All right, so bigger coil over, tick, ah, tick, ah, you got more space. A lot of times those bloody knuckles come from the fact that those locking collars are seized onto the body of the coilover. If anybody's had coilovers in the past, you know what I'm talking about, especially if you live up north. Now this comes from a lot of different things. Temperature of the metal swelling or shrinking is probably one of the most common, especially in the wintertime. You also have dirt, grime, salt, and probably the worst, which does happen, rust. Depending on what type of coilover you get, a lot of times those threads can rust. Now there are other options out there that claim baby powder or gear lube 
fixes that from happening. But the best way to go about it is quite honestly, anti-seize, okay? Use on the inside of any threaded location of the coilover and wipe off any excess before you go on your merry way into the winter time with coilovers on. Additionally, when cleaning your car, ensure that after washing, you air dry your coilovers. A lot of times people will blast their coilovers up and down with a high pressure wash, some sexy high foam soap so they can make a super cool Instagram edit, but then they never actually dry it off. And a lot of times if you run out into the road with salt and all that sort of stuff, it can actually increase the buildup. Water solidifies that buildup. There are coilover covers out there that are essentially cover the area of the coilover to prevent dirt from entering, which is a good idea, but the unfortunate thing is is that there's a large potential area of dirt to kick up from underneath or over, which is then never washed off because water can't get through the sleeve to clean the coilover and you can't dry it, which essentially almost amplifies it. If you do have sleeves on your coilovers, that's okay. It's just recommended that you take them off occasionally to clean the inside of the coilover as well. Otherwise, you're gonna get your coilovers to look really squeaky, they're gonna make a bunch of noises and you're just not gonna really enjoy it. Do this every spring and fall and you'll be set to go. Every time you do get coilovers in a car, it is recommended. Jack it up in the springtime, readjust everything, take it out, clean it up, make sure everything's ready to rock and roll, then throw them back in. It's gonna make the entire summer way better, I promise. Another common mistake is adjusting your preload to the maximum or minimum possible because you just don't want movement. This happens with my static boys, all right? Tighten it down, make it not move, put it on blocks and keep it dumped because that's the way we do it but you can have some poor results by going to the absolute minimum or the absolute maximum. If you max out your spring load, you may end up with the car's corner weighing less than the spring load of the linear rate spring that's in your coilover. And you'll end up with the spring not even compressing regardless of the stress on that corner, causing the car to be at its core extremely static. Now, there are some people that do that on purpose and that's good, but a lot of times if it's your first or second purchase, you have no idea what you're doing. So you just try to make everything as static as possible. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't have to be like that. Go around corners hard and perform with the setup that you do dial in and it'll feel like you're on ice skates. That same thing goes for your dampen adjustments or compression adjustments. The fine tuning is just that, fine tuning, all right? Play around with it, spend some time with it, test different things out, drive it for a little bit. Really try to understand what you want and what you don't. You'll likely lose any value from spending money on coilovers if you abuse the fine tuning adjustments because that you need that part to really dial in the entire experience of the coilover system. You're replacing the suspension. It's a big deal. And if you end up blaming the company for poor performance when it's much more likely us, that can sometimes leave a bad taste in your mouth. A lot of times when we install coilovers for the first time when we have a bad experience, it is usually user error. And it's not just coilovers that will impact coilover performance, but it's all the bits and pieces that connect to the coilover. Suspension parts interact with each other, not separately. So a pretty big mistake is assuming that a coilover replacement alone is gonna improve your overall performance. And that's just not true. It is, but it isn't. Like, it kind of is, it is. Hey mom, can I do that? Well, it depends, all right? What's the weather like outside? But in all honesty, if you are going to jump into your suspension, you really wanna try and do the same thing with your bushings, your control arms, your shim changes, and all of those other things that play into the fact of how your suspension and how your coilovers are gonna perform. If you're gonna jump into coilovers for a performance aspect and you truly wanna control the suspension of the car, you'll wanna focus on every part that connects to that coilover. Things that reduce the oscillation and the bumps and changes in the road. The fact that you may be putting coilovers on a 200,000 mile Lexus and sometimes you don't want to change the bushings. Spoiler alert, you don't want to change the bushings, okay? They work best when everything connected to the coilovers are also new. As these parts change, you'll also need to adjust the coilover accordingly. A lot of times what'll happen is you'll dial in your suspension, you'll dial in your coilovers, you get that perfect fitment, and then a few months later, you decide to replace the bushings or the lower control arms or the upper control arms or anything that has to do with your suspension geometry. You never get it aligned because why would you go get it aligned? I mean, not, I wouldn't. And then you don't get it aligned and then ultimately your coilovers don't perform the same because there's different parts that are now connected to the performance of its function. This is hugely important from a functioning aspect just as much with coilovers because it's just like a tune. Add more parts to your motor and you'll need to retune your car. Adjust your suspension components and you'll need to redial in your suspension. A lot of times you just don't want to because we're lazy. 
it happens. Coilovers are like a relationship after the honeymoon period. It's still lovely, like you like it, but there's still work to be done. You're gonna have arguments. It's going to take work, all right? It's not 50-50, it's 100-0 sometimes. And it's gonna leave you questioning your decisions every once in a while. But that's okay, all right? Look at me, it's okay because it's totally worth it. Coilovers are awesome and they do take a bit of work, but what they do to your car and the way they make it look is fantastic. And once you understand them fully, just like a misunderstood child, I don't have a child, cat, like a misunderstood cat, I have those. It's completely worth it because you accept them for all of the big pain in the asses that they are. Or just remove your suspension completely and ride on blocks. That's, I mean, that's the only other option. Let us know what you think and your thoughts are below. And if you're looking for suspension, wheels, or tires, bet you didn't hear it in that order before, be sure to check us out over at fitmanindustries.com. I'm Alex from Fitman Industries, and we will see you later. Peace.